Chapters 10 and 11, Bigfoot and Littlefoot, written by Ellen Potter. Chapter 10, Secret Project. There was no school the next day. That was a good thing because Hugo was busy. All morning long, he worked on his secret project. He only came out of his room for hazelnut pancakes for breakfast, which he gobbled down before hurrying back to work. There he is, working hard. What are you doing in here, Winnie? Um, flung open his bedroom door and squinted at him suspiciously. Stuff, Hugo said. Stuff? What kind of stuff? Winnie asked, planting her hands on her hips. Hey, Winnie, guess what I found? Hugo said. What? She asked, perking up with interest. Your nose, Hugo said. It was in my business again. Ha ha, Winnie said and slammed the door. Finally, just before lunch, Hugo finished. He held up his creation and inspected it. You're perfect, he whispered to it. It was a tiny Sasquatch. Hugo had carved it out of white pine. It was almost exactly the size of the human toy, but much more detailed. You could see the little fingers and the to toes. You could even see the tiny fingernails and toenails. There were little smidgy lines carved into it for hair, and its face looked like, looked like Hugo's. Carefully, Hugo placed it in his boat. Since he had kept the human toy, it was only fair to give the human a Sasquatch toy. It was, a kind of, it was kind of like trading monster cards. With four or five huffy breaths, Hugo sent the boat sailing out into the big wide world once again. Chapter 11, and there it is. Chapter 11, Bigfoot, there's the boat. The boat came sailing back into his room the very next day. The carved Sasquatch was gone. In its place was a little jar with a folded piece of paper inside it. A note, a note from someone in the big wide world. Hugo unscrewed the jar's lid. He tipped the jar upside down and shook out the note, then unfolded it. This was what it said. My name is Boone. I'm almost 10 years old. I'm small for my age, but my grandma, grandma says I'm faster than a sneeze through a screen door. Do you believe in Bigfoot? Boone. Hugo reread the note a few times. The last question puzzled him. What was Bigfoot? Sounded like one of those monsters in Mad Marvin's monster cards, but he'd never seen a Bigfoot card. How can I answer the note if I don't know what Bigfoot is, he thought. Then he had an idea. He jumped up and ran out of his apartment. He ran down the long winding cave hall to apartment 1B and knocked at the door. The door opened. Gigi was standing there holding a very fat book called Everything You've Ever Wanted to Know About Obtuse Triangles with one finger stuck in the middle to mark her page. Hello, Hugo, said Gigi. What's a Bigfoot? Hugo asked her. I'm looking at it, she said, gazing back at him. <laughs> Hugo lowered his voice. You mean there's one and there is there one here? He looked behind him nervously. You're a Bigfoot, Hugo, said Gigi. My feet aren't big, they're just regular. I'm a Bigfoot too, Gigi explained. We are Bigfoot, we, are, we all are. Bigfoot is what humans called Sasquatches. Hugo considered that. It's not very nice, said Hugo. Gigi shrugged. Are there any other questions? Hugo shook his head. Okay, see you later, Hugo, she said, and shut the door. Back in his room, Hugo wrote his reply. My name is Hugo, and I do believe in Bigfoot. I live in the North Woods. Where do you live? Have you ever been to a Bora Bora or Atlantic City? Hugo. He sent the boat out through the hole in his wall and smiled. Knowing someone who lived in the big wide world made him feel like he was a part of the big wide world. Two, part of the hills and the fields and the ripple warm river and Bora Bora and everything in between.